Narcissists absolutely hate being exposed for what they really are. I mean, there is no way around it. They absolutely can't stand it when you see through that layer of protection that they have built around themselves. And not only can they not stand it, they don't even believe it once they are exposed that any of the things that you're saying are true. If you're new to my channel, I am a self-aware narcissist. I also have borderline personality disorder. If you ever catch up a narcissist doing something that they're not supposed to be doing, cheating, lying, gaslighting, any of those things, uh, especially if you catch them cheating, that draws the shame right into them. And they do not feel guilt. They do, however, feel a deep-seated shame uh, for anything that they do because they really just care about what people think about them. They don't really care that they actually hurt anyone. If you catch a narcissist doing something that they're not supposed to be doing, especially cheating, they will deny it to all high heavens. But if you finally show them hardcore evidence, proof, they're still going to stonewall you. They're still going to look you right in your face and tell you that you don't know what you're talking about. And then what most time happens after that is they're now going to block you on everything. They're going to block all your social media, your phone calls disappear, but they will block you on everything. And when they do this, they're going to go run right to the supply that they've been working on the entire time that they were with you anyway. Narcissists can never have enough supply. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that all narcissists cheat, and I also am not saying all borderlines cheat, but I will say this. They have to get supply from somewhere. So in a lot of cases, it is another individual. Sometimes it can be their job. Sometimes it can be their hobbies. That's also a form of supply. Any, anything they get uh, attention, services, sex, admiration from. Like TikTok, for instance. Also Instagram and all the other things. That's why they're lacking all the hoes. That's why they're doing all the chips. But they're going to run straight to that other supply. And they've already been talking trash about you to that supply the entire time. So when you try to contact them afterward, you're going to basically confirm what they've been saying about you all along that you're crazy. Now, right after they get through blocking you on everything, ghosting you everywhere, they're going to, like I said, they're going to start running you down to everyone else. They're going to go to your friends. They're going to go to their friends. And the other thing that they really like to do is these smear campaigns. Borderlines are especially good at smear campaigns as well. But you can pretty much guarantee that if that person is narcissistic. If you are able to look at their social media, they are going to be the biggest victim you ever saw in your life, and you are going to be the biggest abuser that they have ever seen in their life. It's all triangulation. You have the victim at the bottom, which is always the toxic person. You have the savior, and you have the abuser, and those roles can swap, but you can always guarantee that that narcissist or toxic person is going to be right on the bottom of that triangle, and they're always going to be the victim. You'll see their posts all over their Facebook. You'll see it all over their social media, how this person did them wrong. They'll make these little memes. Oh, you know, uh, what are some of the popular ones? I don't even have to tell you. There's about a bajillion of them on the, on the freaking internet. You know, like there was a line that I had to draw and it's just a shame that uh, both my sanity and peace couldn't be on the same side of the line with me and you on the same line too, etc., etc., etc. No contact. Once you've exposed them, once you know what they are, get out, stay out, do not deal with them further. Real talk.